stock market has been rallying at the start of 2023. The recent rally is fueled by Fed's downshift in rate hikes, and the S&P 500 is now up nearly 8% on the year. The job report came out much stronger than expected. The January job report shows a whopping 517,000 job added, more than double the forecast. It has been a rough 2022 for most investors, as it seemed that nothing was going their way. But 2023 seemed to be polar opposites of the previous year. Interest rates are going down, and the stocks are moving up. While the recent rally came as a relief for many, and is welcomed by investors after a rough last year, it may not be viewed as the confirmation that the worst is over. There are still a lot of uncertainties in the overall economy. Inflation is still much higher than the comfort level, and Fed is still quite aggressive against combating inflation. Although the market loved the idea that the Fed only increased the interest rate by 25 basis points, compared to 50 basis points for the last six cycles, the Fed may not be very comfortable with loosening the financial condition too fast. Fed officials already are out on speaking circuits, attempting to rein in expectations and prevent the market from moving too far ahead of policy actions. Inflation is still a big issue. Although it is falling steadily, there still is some way to go. On the other hand, the layoffs are just getting started. A steady spike in unemployment could bring a mild recession. Although the market is taking comfort in the latest job report, the consensus among economists is that it is premature to consider that the potential recession is cancelled. At the moment there is a strong job growth, wages are growing moderately, and unemployment is historically low. But how long this labor market lasts will be the test that determines where the economy is heading. Now for more on the markets is Mohamed El Arian, Allianz and Gramercy advisor and president of Queens College, Cambridge. And um, Mohamed, looking at what Larry Summers had to say earlier, he said that this may be the most complicated economy he's ever had to try and read. Where do you come down on that? The jobs number on Friday really surprised a lot of people. So he's absolutely right. And something that we have discussed um, on many Mondays is that we have significant uncertainty on three key issues. One is the way the economy functions. We can talk and defend many different outlooks for the real economy over the course of the year. Two, inflation. I can think of three possible scenarios for inflation. And then finally, policy and the disagreement between the markets and the Fed. So there is an, an unusual level of uncertainty, and then it feeds on to the structural uncertainty we've been talking about. The energy transition, the rewiring of supply chains, the change in globalization. So I completely agree with Larry. It is a very difficult economy to read, and we have to get our head around the notion that there are many potential outcomes, and no one can convince you with a high level of conviction and foundation that one will prevail. We just don't know, Becky. So what do you do? Where are you going to throw your hat? So first, if you're a portfolio manager, and it goes back to something you discussed in the 7 o'clock hour, you think a lot more about the tails. You don't ignore the tails as thin and very unlikely. You think a lot more about the tail. You don't just position yourself for the baseline, because the baseline is less probable. As an economist, you, th you take a lot of time going through the data in major, major details, because that is what's going to show you. Um, I think the service sector is probably the most important sector to understand today. OK. Um, in terms of what you think the Fed is going to do, how much more complicated did it just get? I mean, Jay Powell was sounding a little dovish last week before we got these jobs numbers. but. Uh, you you look at the jobs number, my guess is they're game on again in terms of higher rates. Yeah, you know, he said disinflation 11 times during the press conference, 11 times. That word wasn't mentioned a single time by the ECB president or the governor of the Bank of England who spoke the following day. Um, and he gave the market the perception of a hard turn towards soft landing. And then we got the Friday report. So, so He's going to have to decide whether he wants to clarify tomorrow um, where he see, sees things going. Look, 
you know that I would have preferred that they do 50 basis points and then wait and see. They didn't. I suspect we have two more 25 basis points ahead of us. Um, and my, my major concern is the possibility that they end up hiking into a weakening economy. The economy is very strong now, and that's why you wanted to get the hikes out of the way. I worry that we may end up hiking into a weakening economy, and that would be unfortunate. Where, where is the economy showing signs of cracking? Where, 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 did, where does it happen and when does it happen? So the forward-looking indicators are the reason why some people, not me, some people predict a recession with 100 percent probability. I'm not there. You know that. I've said it over and over again. Um, there is nothing predestined about a recession. But if you look at a small set of forward indicators, the forward indicators themselves, the leading indicators themselves, the PMIs, manufacturing in particular, the layoffs that we're hearing um, of, you can make a case for a significant slowdown. That is what people are looking at. But you can't deny the strength of the labor market. And that's why people like me say, you know what, it's not a done deal by any measure that will end up in a recession.